morning, Central Texas. Welcome to Kiss Community Connections at My Kiss 1031. I'm Phyllis Jones, your host. I got some short guests in the room with me today. You know I'm being facetious about that, right? Really, really, really. really. Anyway, um, let's talk about something that's important. Other than the junk you've been listening to and talking about for the whole week of last week. You know, that trash and all that stuff we're talking. Let's talk about something that means something to people. Do you realize in the United States right now, through this furlough, we have 800,000 people not working right now? I didn't say 1,000. I said 800,000 people are out of work right now today, which is something we need to think about. Other things we need to think about is, I don't know if you noticed, but on January 11th, your IRS runs out of money. I think today is, the, is, is it, so they run out of money. Uh, end of January, would you like to know that WIC runs out of money end of January? And do you know that February 1st, USDA runs out of money. So I think we're facing a crisis situation, and I think we need to think about it, uh, especially in the areas that we live in. Because we live in Colleen Fort Hood area, so we do know that Fort Hood has a lot of um, civil service workers. We also know um, the VA hospitals in Temple is here in Temple with us. So we have a lot of workers that are furloughed and out of a job. And, you know, along with that, you have people who overspend for Christmas. I, I don't understand how you overspend for Christmas. But anyway, we have people who overspend for the holiday and they depend on that rapid refund. It's not going to rapidly happen. It's not coming. So we need to think about that as far as our community is concerned. And we do know people that are on WIC. And when WIC runs out of money and you're giving your food stamps, you do know that people survive by any means necessary. Yes, I did say that. So we need to think about that as a community. You know, when we're doing things, when we're talking to people, we need to remind people of those things, that these many people are out of work, that, you know, your income tax and your... WIC and your food stamps, all those things, because our dear president said that he's going to hold out on this as long as possible. Uh, we're reaching a situation that most of us have never been in, in at all. We've never been in and know nothing about it. And that's not something we weren't prepared for. I know we had a what, depression umpteen years ago, and our forefathers were prepared for that. But I don't think anybody here today is prepared for what could happen uh, to our community as is such. We're not ready for that. You know, you remove a kid's cell phone and they did. And now we're talking about removing your life as far as your comfortable style of living and eating. And if you do know, remember, USDA covers the free lunch and free breakfast programs at schools. So, you know, you might say this won't touch me, but later on down the line, it will touch you. It, it, it will affect you. It will be something that you're trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening. And I hope we're thinking about it in a way of, what can we do? Uh, no, we can't save the world, but there are things we might be able to do. So we need to put on our thinking caps and try to figure out how we can help people, how we can talk to people. What can we do? Um, what can we say? But we need to also remember that this is happening and it's not a joke and it's not, you know, something like uh, they're going to stop selling bread tomorrow. It, it's not like that. It's um, going to hit us. And like I said, remember, People will survive by any means necessary. And it's a survival thing, and we all know that. And we're pushing people to the point of survival. You know, uh, it's not cool when you know you get a check every two weeks and you find out your check every two weeks ain't coming. You know, and most people don't have six months of saving uh, to bag it up. You have bills to pay. You have things to do. And, you know, I asked one of our city council people in Colleen, what was the water company going to do? Since the water company is owned by the city, and I got no answer. I got, you know, those crickets. You know, when I asked that question, it was like, uh, I don't know. To me, that wasn't good enough. So we need to focus on that other than the other things that we've been focusing on that we can't do anything about and can't change. We need to focus on our one, our neighborhood. And like I said, it's the Central Texas area. We all know how it can affect us. So... We need to, like I said, start talking to people, um, letting people know what's going on, asking them, did you know? I put this on Facebook last week, and it was a frenzy going on. I mean, people would have thought that I had said the world was going to end tomorrow. Uh, and and it was a surprising shock to some people. Some people thought about it, but when I put a date to it, it made a bit of difference. 
So let's think about it, be mindful of it, and because we all know somebody who is going to or is suffering from this. The other interesting thing I put on Facebook, I don't know if you know, is did anybody know that the Killeen Mall is in foreclosure? Did, did you know that the Killeen Mall is in foreclosure? You heard, you know, that sounds rough to say a mall is in foreclosure, but our Killeen Mall is in foreclosure. A lot of people said it's due to the stores they have in there and a lot of other things, but a mall is in foreclosure, which sounds kind of, oh my goodness, you know, how do you lose a mall? But I, I, ours is. And so what's going to happen to it? I don't know. Now for my guest. One of my guests, he's been on the show before. And we've talked, and he's brought a bunch of short people in here. Uh, <laughs> and he keeps bringing more short people in, and I don't know why. But uh, I have the Nighthawks as my guest this morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing real tall. <laughs> you know, because there's one young man in here, and, you know, if he reaches his hand up, he could touch the ceiling, most likely. That sounds really, really, really rough. But he probably could reach the ceiling. And, now he's going to prove it and do it. You know? <laughs> he said, I put him in that situation. Go, but uh, I need to ask a question. First of all, introduce yourselves and what roles you play with the team. He, he, you know what? Well, he, he could just be the ball holder. and Nobody could get it from him if he held it up. <laughs> but okay, and... Captain, point guard, shooting guard. I have no clue what those two people are. Uh, the quarterback. <laughs> oh, the who? The quarterback of the team. I, I, I don't know nothing about football. How you know quarterback means football then? I, I don't know because I only associated with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> people just keep saying quarterback and I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay, so you do what? Uh, live with everything. Okay. Right. So how long have you been playing? I've been playing professional basketball for 11 years now. And where have you played? Germany, Italy, Spain, France, Hungary, Israel, and Greece. What's the advantage of playing overseas versus stateside? Um, less politics. Uh, travel, get to travel the world. Um, learn different cultures, different languages. Um, Tax-free money. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you get to just broaden your horizon. Meet new people, meet different people, uh, people you're not used to, knowing the same culture you grew up with. Uh, the plethora of reasons as to why I would recommend if you're not in the NBA. So why why are you with the Nighthawks now? Because the Nighthawks is is not overseas. A lot of different reasons. Um, my family's here. Okay. I have a nine year old son, three year old daughter, fiance. Uh. It's a lot of different reasons. This okay. Jason is bringing a lot of a lot of things to the table. Uh, as far as basketball is concerned, within this area, there's a lot of kids growing up in this area. There's a lot of talent, and they don't have the the tools to get to a Division One school, professional basketball area. And I want to give them that path to get professional basketball. Okay, great. All right, cool. And the shortest one in here. I forgot your name. Then, Henry, why are you playing with Nighthawk? Well, I love basketball. That's something I cannot give up on. I want to try and go big or somewhere, either overseas, NBA, you know, just one of the big times. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you that question that, that people always attack tall people for. Is basketball something you like, or is it something that just because you're tall, you're doing it? Not necessarily uh, just because of my height. I mean, you can't teach height. That's the major thing that everybody needs to understand. But basketball is something that me and my father a uh, long time has been trying to get into for years uh, before he passed away. Ever since he first put a basketball in my hand when I was a baby, I could not let it go. Good. Because, you know, people are, uh, and I don't like when people say that, you know, that you see this kid this real tall, the first thing people put you into a foot basketball. <laughs> they see the stocky kid, and the first thing they throw you is into football. You know, and and I don't, I don't like when people do that because I think you're 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 disadvantaging their child when you try to put them in something simply because they're built a certain way that fits a certain profile of, of what you do. 
But as the Nighthawks, what do you all do in the community? Uh, we just do the best we can to try and, you know, bring people together. Because Killeen is, it is very small, but not a lot of people like, you know, like to go out and do different things, do some things that's new. But we just try to bring our kids together, bring family, you know, just to try to make room with family. So how does one get into the Nighthawk, Mr. King Captain? Yeah, what do they have to do? do, they, what, do what do they have to do? If someone says, hey, I can do this, I know I can, what do they do? Well, we have um, a lot of different ways they can be contacted. We, they have Facebook page, Texas Nighthawk, social media, emails, um, my email, the owner's email, telephone, any way to get a hold of us, and then we can proceed accordingly. So we try out uh, anything that you're good at as far as if you're good at social media, publicizing, helping us in that manager side. Uh, it's everything we can talk about, anything that we're good at. That so, I'm going to ask you this weird question. So, to be a part of the Nighthawks, do they have to know anything about basketball? Does that help? If or they want to play basketball, yes. That would be a big, big plus. Um, but if they wanted to, if they are like have a degree in business they, and they have some ideas of business, we'll get with Jason, the owner, and we talk to them about business. They have a degree in marketing and they want to help market. That's also an alley that we can discuss. So there's a lot of different ways that we can approach to being a part of the Nighthawks, not just basketball. So what you are doing on January 19th, like at one o'clock in the day, it's Saturday. Your question, owner. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could get him to talk. I knew I could get him. Um, well, on the 19th of January, uh, we actually have our game just got canceled. Um, it was supposed to be uh, playing the Kyle Stallions. Um, so now that day is actually free. I like that. He, they look at me like, oh, my God, what does she have in mind? Okay. <laughs> uh, I belong to a group called T-Soy. And it's Texas Save Our Youth. Mm -hmm. And we're against child sex trafficking. And if you know, this month is Human Trafficking Month, uh, Awareness Month. And I don't know if you do know, but Bell County, we're kind of hot as far as child sex trafficking. And our boys in Bell County are being taken more than the girls because they can make more money off of a boy. They had to say it, and I don't like saying it, but it's, it's, it's something that um, is true. And it's something that we can change. Anyway, t -Soy, we're doing a funeral to bury uh, human trafficking. Uh, uh, he's looking like, she's doing a what? We're doing a, a burial and we're going to host it. So I would like to know if the Nighthawks would like to be Paul Bearer. Yes, you need what? Six? No, no, no. It's, it's a toolbox. So about four. Four? Yeah. We'll be there. But all of you can come. We'll be there. And you can come in your, come suited up mm -hmm. so people will know who you are. Uh, it will be good to, that you're against, and I'm like, you know, that you're against. Oh, yeah. Trafficking, but it also is it just it's all around good. It's because it's a community event. We I wrote a skit, so we have different players playing different parts. Uh, you know, we've got everybody playing. You know, everything that you would think of, but it's a shock. I'm doing it as a shock, and what I mean by shock, you have people in the audience that are part of the, the skit, and they're gonna just jump out and do their part. Okay. But I'd like to invite you out to be the yes, part. We'll we'll okay. I, cool. I, I kind of I have to say. I might not be there okay. because my daughter has a cheer competition okay. and I promised her this year that I will try to make sure. We do I, want you to live. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, but I, if, if I'm not there, somebody in our upper management will be there. Okay. And my players will be there. That'll be good. That's good. I like that. I like how we can pull all together in a moment's notice and get something done that's good for our community. As a matter of fact, we have a game on the 23rd. So during that time, uh, we'll be giving out tickets as well. Okay. Because we'll have some young people there and some well, the men there too who don't know who you are. Uh, so what we need to do is work on publicity mm -hmm. because everybody needs to know who you are. Especially our, oh yeah, especially the males because our males, are lo we're losing them to a system that we can't get them out of. And I think that if they knew you all were around, you know, and could see you, and not necessarily play basketball, but just to be around you, come to the games, 
you all might let some of the kids volunteer to do things, you know, and who knows where that kid will go, but we need to get you all out there so that the community will know you're here. And like I said, the most important thing is our males, because uh, I see too many of them over there and not over here where we want them to be. So, you what now? Oh, yeah, he's really big on. Uh... I couldn't hear him. <laughs> So I also, in my spare time, I help with, I mentor troubled youth, so to speak. Uh, okay. Kids that after after school, uh, work the Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. and youth services on post. Okay. As far as anything, it's like kids that don't know, don't have anywhere to go after after school. Right. Normally when they don't have anywhere to go, they get in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Don't have anything to do, they get in a lot of trouble. True. So I talk to boys and females. Uh, the females were called uh, smart girls and the males are called passport to manhood. Oh, good. So, of course, with the males, we talk about hygiene, yeah. um, decisions that they make outside of the school and inside school, um, what they want to be when they grow up, uh, a lot of different things that we talk about and we discuss. And after we finish discussing that, we pick a sport, pick something to do, uh, if it's Nintendo, pool, Uno, Monopoly, kickball, basketball, football, etc. So, when the, with the girls, it's Somewhat similar, right? Uh, so let's, let's do a little change. So we do that. I do that maybe anytime, anytime I get Monday through Friday. Sometimes, most of the time at Charles Patterson Middle School, and we just sit there and talk. And there, there's a lot of talented youth out there. They just misguided. There's something going on where there's right. one parent household, uh, but it's it's a lot. It's it's a lot of talent out there that needs to be discovered. Have you ever been to Kids University? I have not. Have any of you been to Kids University? And you have a clue what Kid University is? You're giving me that. I don't know what she's talking about. Okay. Kid University is on Florence Road, Old Florence Road, between Stan Sluter and Elm. And it's exactly what I just said. It's a kids, what it is, it's a campus light for kids. Inside the building, uh, Daniel Lennon, Lemon, who, um, who was building it, he has every room that kids could want to do something in. If kids are interested in STEM, he has a room for that. If they want to do studio recording, he has a room for that. He has a gym area. He has all the things in there in that building for kids to excel. And he wants programs in there also. So for the kids off post, if you are ever wanted to do some anything with the kids, that would be the place to do it because he's built it for kids. I know. And if, and if you go there, you look and you're like, oh, wow, this is really cute. When you get inside, you're like, oh, my gosh, it's, it's so much in there. He even has a cafeteria-style kitchen, you know, for the kids. To, yeah, I know. <laughs> but so one day in your free time, all three of you are in, in the rest of you, go by there uh, and see what you can do there for kids. And you might be able to do a little bitty game, a little people game, you know, the, you know, the shorter people. <laughs> do something with them there. Um, but like I said, he builds it for kids. And when you go by there, you'll love the building. Because he does the after school thing. Uh, he does that both care. He takes kids to school and he picks them up and brings them back there. So, yeah, they're there. They're there. So, what do you do in the community? I don't off. really do as much um, besides just go to work, go to church. Um, and I can't really do as much as my car is done. Okay. I just do what I can do. But that's good. I mean, doing what you can is what we ask for. Yes, ma'am. Especially with the test of my health. If they have any uh, type of community service or anything like that, then I'm always going to do it. How long had the night house been around? Uh, this is our second year. Uh, this is our second year. Okay. Second year, and um, it's... The first year was a great year. It was a great foundation. We had a great, uh, great group of guys um, that kind of set the way for what we have now. Um, our team is very strong, um, and it, it's just a, it's been a blessing. It's been a complete blessing um, being a part of this for my second year. Um, Cedric, uh, we have Cedric. We have a guy named Cheney. He's from last year. Uh, Myron, Marlon, uh, he's one of our, uh, key players. 
um, they all bring that leadership and that that go get it attitude that it never like it gives me the energy to keep going and keep going and keep going, especially Cedric. Um, he's always, you know, helping me out where I'm getting new ideas and he's, hey, we should try this. We should try that. Um, so it, it, it's constantly keeping me busy and me being busy helps, you know, for my PTSD and I'm trying to get more individuals that's in the military, that's in the uh, Wounded Warrior program to come out and help, you know, and that because that, it gives them a, a, a mental break where we're actually helping. Um, so they do a lot more for me than I actually do for them. <laughs> um, and like I said, it's just been a, it's been a blessing. How do you have to be to be a member of the night? Um, to be a player, a player, you have to be at least 19 years old. And the reason why we have it at 19 um, is because I want to give a 18 year old an opportunity to go to college and play basketball in college. Once you play for us, you can't go to college. You're ineligible because we are considered a professional basketball team. Really? Yes. So the kid can't go to college at all? He can go to college, but he can't play basketball in college. Ah, okay. He can't play basketball. Um, So we, like last year, we actually had an individual. He had great skills. um, He wanted to play for us, but we told him no because we wanted him to go to college and pursue his, his, you know, a degree and and play basketball there. We told him the Nighthawk's not going anywhere. Get your degree, play basketball in college, then you can play for us. Um, but we're all about education and, and trying to mentor the the young. It, it doesn't just have to be, you know, nine years old, 10 years old. If, you know, they're 18 and they need guidance, we're going to give them that guidance. Okay. Yeah, last year when you all played the gym rat? Yes. 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 I thought that was a cool game. It was. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we're, I learned. We're, we're going to be playing them again this year uh, in February, February 16th and 17th. But, you know, I watched how they play. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. And I'm true from there. I wasn't paying attention to the scores. I really wasn't because I wasn't there for the scores. I was there to actually watch. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know, did they play different than, does, did they play different than we do, you know, here? Um, and they did. Yes. They, they played like a chess game. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it was very, um, like I said, I, I played it arm with the army overseas, right. but I've never played actually overseas basketball. So actually watching them play, and then after that first game, I went and talked to the owner slash uh, player coach. Um, he just showed me a, a bunch of different things and techniques that I'm actually bringing to you know the Nighthawks. And having said as a he had 11 years of overseas experience. He actually brings it as well. Right. Um, so we're doing more of a, a chess match instead of like the running gun. You know, we're we're constantly thinking about what's our best option, stuff like that. So that's when I was watching. That's yeah. the main thing I was paying attention. I'm like, they keep playing like they're playing game of chess. They're not playing basketball. I mean, they were playing basketball, but they were doing everything as a chess move. Yes. I'm like, wow. I wonder, and I was wondering. I'm like, wonder if they study in the fact that oh yeah, these how these guys are playing versus. I, I'm constantly how watching. We're playing. I'm constantly watching every day, watching film uh, from different teams, right. like ABA, uh, overseas team. Um, it, so it's constant. It's a homework assignment for me every day. Okay. And then my coaching staff, we I'm sitting down with them, having meetings with them, trying to, you know, find out our best way to you know, bring out the best in Cedric, Henry, and all our other players where they can shine. So when we have our agents come and scouts come, it's easy for them to look great and get picked up. Okay. And so, that's our goal. So Cedric, since you played everywhere and a lot of places, you brought all the, you brought those ideals to the table? Um, I have a small piece to play in that part, yeah. Okay, because you have the advantage of, like I said, the gym rest played basketball like a chess match. And I watched that chess match being played. And I use chess because well, I guess I know I play chess, but I, I use that uh, as what I saw. So did you bring any of those, like you brought some of those over from where you've played? 
to the Nighthawk. Absolutely. I mean, it becomes a territory at this point. Uh, I I bring that to the table because team the, my teammates want to go overseas. Right. I want to prepare them for that that initial act. So when they get overseas, it won't be a culture shock, and they'll know what to expect when they get over there. So it'll be it, transition to be a little bit easier when they get over there. So in practice, where there's practice of games, I bring the same mentality to practicing games here because most of our players don't know what to expect. They right. don't know basketball. It's a professional, professionalism that carries on to the basketball. It's not just pick up basketball. It's not just high school nor college. It's a totally different aspect in, in basketball, and they need to grasp grab, grab that concept as soon as possible so that way when they get over there, they can play. Okay, can you explain something that had to be explained to me last year? I got it now, but imagine there's more people like I was. What's the difference between NBA and ABA? Money. No. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna put him in. in re- How many corners in this building? <laughs> um, the biggest difference is uh, athleticism. There's I always say there's two types of people that play basketball: those that taste the dream of playing basketball, being a professional, and those that the dream chases them. So, the people that dream chases them. Are the NBA, the Dukes, North Carolina, the people play Division One basketball? Those are the dream. Those are the people that the dream chases them. But those that they chase the dream are the ABA, the semi-pro team, the semi-pros in the United States, the G League. Those they're chasing the dream to be in that professional NBA or big Europe overseas talent. Okay. So well, well, the Nighthawks only play. What other teams outside of the United States will, will the Nighthawks play? That question is directed towards this gentleman right over here. <laughs> he goes, I am not answering that one. Um, <laughs> right now, um, we're actually in the process, especially after this year, uh, we're going to sit down with Cedric, um, the coaches and stuff like that, to see exactly where we're at. If uh, I've gotten offered to come down and play uh, the Puerto Rico team. Um, in the ABA, there there is a Mexico team in the ABA um, that they want to do a couple of games with us. Um, but I, like I said, I want our guys to grow. I just don't want them to like just jump in a fire. Right. You know, and then they get discouraged and stuff like that. So that's a lot of things that like my, myself, the director of operations and the coaching staff, have to really sit down and say, hey, listen, with the key pieces that we have now, are they ready for that? You know, maybe one and two might be, but a team is five players. You know, five players are on that court. Are they ready? You know, are they ready to do that, you know, that team basketball, the, the little things that, that make them look good, you know, that make the team look good, that make them recognized by other, you know, overseas teams. And uh, so... That's where we have to be at right now. Like, you know, Cedric, 11 years of experience, you know, but he can't make all our points. Right. right. You know, grab all the rebounds is a team effort. And is the team ready to go to that next level where we're playing overseas? You know, that's where we have to be. So if we want to come see the Nighthawks play, where do we go? Um, where we, we moved from the Temple uh, Rec Center, and now we have a better location. Uh, it's Camp Triumph in Copper's Cove, uh, 1203 Pecan Cove. Um, we great facility. Um, the only thing we're kind of missing is a shot clock and, and more fans. That's, that's, uh, okay. But we we fixing one of them, but we need more fans. We need the support. We need the community. Uh, our ticket price is only $8. And once again, this is all done by myself. You know, I don't really make any money from this. I'm just trying to give young men and youth an opportunity to grow in our community and be successful men. You know, um, I'm, I'm constantly getting, you know, uh, dance uh, classes and stuff like that to be our halftime show to give them an opportunity to practice and shine, you know, for their craft. Like I said, this, this whole team and, and uh, the concept of it is to help our community. Uh, my staff are retired military, so we really don't get paid for this. It's just right. because we love what we do. 
So, you know, if a, a family comes out and there's a family of four and they can't afford the eight dollars, then we'll work with them. We'll work with them. We have concession stands. We have we have so many different things. We have a halftime show like today. Uh, one of my sponsors got me an autographed LeBron James jersey, Laker jersey that he wants to give away. He wants to give away, but his stipulation was they have to make a shot. So what we're doing, <laughs> so what we're doing is it, it costs ten dollars, uh, and you get a shot. And the line right before the half court line, that's where you can shoot from. If you make it, that's a, almost a four hundred dollar jersey that we're giving away. We just want to take your pictures, put it on the website, and you enjoy. And then make sure you come out to the next game wearing, hey, I won this. You know, hey, I'm trying to bring families together. So you're playing tonight, right? Play tonight. What 6 time? PM, 6 p.m. Okay. And the where we have to open. be? Uh, it's 12.03 Pecan Cove. Uh, doors will open at, at 5 o'clock. So please, we need your help. Uh, we need the, the fans because uh, we're playing a, a tough team today. The, the Tri-City All-Stars, um, they're the only ones that gave us our, our one loss this year. Oh, wow. Uh, so we have a lot of revenge for them. Um, but they had a crowd. They had a crowd that really got behind them. And the same thing we need. We need that crowd behind us. Um, they're right now, they're ranked four. Um, and so if we beat them, we take their spot. So we need to knock them out. We need to knock them out. But we need those fans there. Okay, fans, we got to come and knock them out. Thank you.